Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So today we're doing a video by request. Subscriber Terry Holloway asked me if I would do this video, so I said okay, and I'm doing it. Today what we're going to do is we are going to field strip and demo how to field strip my kel Sub 2000 or Sub 2K. So stay tuned, let's get right into the video. And welcome back. So yes, like I said, this was a reviewer requested video uh, that we're doing today. Thank you, Terry Holloway, for suggesting it and giving me a good idea for some content. Uh, but as per the usual, I got to ask you to go down and hit that like and subscribe button and make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. YouTube's been kind of playing around with the algorithms and they're not real favorable to content creators who do gun videos. And I have noticed a pretty sharp drop in my views and my watches. And I think that's because YouTube is playing around with the algorithms because they're not really in support of gun videos. Speaking of YouTube, YouTube, this is not a disassembly. This is standard maintenance. This is what you do with a firearm to clean it and take care of it. So I'm not doing a disassembly video. I'm not modifying the firearm in any way, shape, or form. This is a basic maintenance video, and it is expected that you should have to do this, shouldn't uh, make any problems with the policy for YouTube videos. All right, so let's get right into uh, how we take this firearm apart to do a general maintenance and cleaning on it. Now, obviously, the very first thing you do anytime you're dealing with a firearm is you want to make sure it's unloaded. So with this particular firearm, I will go ahead and I will pull the bolt to the rear. I will physically inspect the chamber to make sure there's no round in the chamber and I have no magazine in the magazine well. I have no ammunition or magazines on the table. We are dealing with a safe firearm. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do to disassemble this firearm is you're going to want to put the safety on. And you want to put the safety on just because of the simple fact you don't want to inadvertently pull the trigger and have the hammer fall because if the hammer falls, you'll never get it put back together. The bolt actually has to ride over the hammer, and if you do that, you have to further disassemble the gun to reset the hammer. Once you've got the safety engaged and you know the firearm is safe, Go ahead and drop the bolt into the battery position and then we're going to go ahead and take apart the firearm. The next thing you do is I like to take and I like to put the muzzle of the firearm right on top of the workbench here so I have a good stable pa uh, platform to push on and then we start our disassembly process at the butt end of the stock. Alright so this pin right here is the one that we have to remove to start it. Now you can see there's three holes here. This is your length of pull adjustment. Me being a six foot three gorilla I've got my length of pull set out as long as it will go. But this pin is the one you got to remove. So to remove it, you'll see right here is the mechanism. And this is the mechanism to actually release the firearms folding so you can uh, extend it out into the shooting position. This is what holds the spring and this pin in here holds everything captive. So what I do is I take my index finger and I go ahead and I'll push down on that. And you can see I can move it if I push on it. And then when I'm pushing on that, I can literally push this pin out. You can do this with no tools. All you have to do is kind of push up and down and wiggle a little bit and that pin will come right out with your fingers. Now if you've got one that's a little tight, a punch would help you to do this part process a little easier, but you really shouldn't need to do this. I've only done this a couple of times and it comes right out and it always has since day one. Once that pin is out, go ahead and just release that finger and you can see none, no springs go flying or anything like that. We don't have any problems that way. Then all we do is we take this mechanism out completely, set it on the workbench, take this buttstock off completely, set it on the workbench. All right, so once we have the butt and the, uh, the locking mechanism and the pin out, we can go ahead and we can slide the, the bolt back and you can see the spring is coming out here. So then we go ahead and remove that spring and that charging handle falls right out. The bolt will slide out of the gun just like that. It's all very, very loose in there. It's very easy to get out. There shouldn't be any problems. Now this bolt is in two pieces. The, uh, the front portion of the bolt and the rear portion of the bolt and they just interlock like this together and that's how they operate inside of the gun. And you don't want to take it down any more than this because once you start talking about that, you're starting to talk about taking down the uh, parts of the receiver and taking out screws. 
there's springs in here and stuff like that and I'm not going to get into that uh, one because YouTube doesn't like it but two unless you have broken something in here you really have no need to go in here so to clean it all you have to do is fold the firearm back up and you can clean the barrel just from this position you can run your patches and your swabs and your eyelets and every anything that you're using to normally clean any other firearm just do it in this position with the firearm folded up as far as the bolt is concerned on um, there's there's roll pins in here that you can use to take the extractor and uh, the ejector out uh, there's a roll pin in here that uh, you can use to take the firing pin out the problem with that is is once you remove roll pins uh, you usually have to replace them because they don't hold their tension anymore and you really don't have a need to take any of those things apart unless you have a problem or you are are replacing something or fixing something so as far as cleaning these parts uh, this is probably going to tick a lot of people off and it's really going to ruffle a lot of feathers but I've been doing it for years and it works really well especially for internal parts I use carburetor cleaner there is not going to be a better cleaner out here to clean these things than carburetor cleaner and I actually learned this in the military when we were firing M16s and M4s hundreds and hundreds of rounds and those things get super dirty carburetor cleaner does a really good job of cleaning it the downside of carburetor cleaner is it sucks all of the oil out of the metal the metal will be completely devoid of any oil so when you put everything back together you have to make sure that you re-oil it and accordingly otherwise it'll rust so what I'll do is I'll take my bolt and I'll stick it in an ice cream pail I'll take my bolt carrier and I will stick that in an ice cream pail I will take my pin and my charging handle drop that in the ice cream pail and I will take my spring and drop it in the ice cream pail got all my parts into the uh, into the bucket and then I just take some carburetor cleaner and I'll spray it inside of the bucket make sure you do this in a well ventilated area because this stuff does stink so I'll just go and I'll hose everything down really really good also wouldn't be a horrible idea to wear safety glasses of some sort because it will splatter around then I'll take the parts and I'll just make sure I get a good disbursement of carburetor cleaner on everything and it just cleans all that carbon and gunpowder and gross stuff off of there just does a really nice job and it really minimizes a lot of scrubbing then you can take either one of these military uh, gun cleaning toothbrushes or you can take a, a brass brush whichever you prefer and you can use that to scrub out all of the grooves and area and there's really not a lot to them in this bolt this thing is so simply built and made it's it's really conducive to field stripping and cleaning there's not a lot of small parts that you can lose it's just really well thought of and it, they really kept the design extraordinarily simple so once I've got all the parts good and hosed down I like to re-hose them before I take them out and then I'll just take a paper towel and I'll wipe them off and get all that grime and dirt and crud off of there set them aside do that with all of the parts paying particular attention to the bolt the bolt face uh, the little grooves on the bottom side of the bolt just make sure you just get all of the crap off just like cleaning any other firearm this is no different than cleaning your 1911 or your model 700 bolt right deer rifle not a whole lot different in any way shape or form the other nice thing about carburetor cleaner is once you get it all wiped off it dries very very quickly so you just leave these things sitting here for a few minutes and it will pretty much dry residue free and then it'll be ready for oil now that all the parts are clean and they are dry we have to go ahead and we have to re-lubricate and re-oil them so what I'll do is I'll just take your favorite gun oil doesn't matter if it's rem oil or one shot or whatever gun oil you like if you like using CLP that's fine you can use that I'll spray a little bit on a paper towel and then I'll just lightly coat all of the metal parts again with oil I do not like to heavily oil parts like this especially when I'm putting them right into my safe for storage because all oil seems to want to do is collect dust and if there's any dust floating around in the air the oil will adhere to the dust or the dust will adhere to the oil and then you've got dusty dirty parts so I try to just keep my oiling to a minimum just enough to 
uh, lubricate things and make sure that they don't rust. And then right before I shoot, I'll give it another little shot of oil prior to using it on the range. Now things like the spring, which are a little harder to oil, I'll just put a little spray of oil on that. Kind of wipe it off, call that good. All the parts are cleaned and oiled. I am not going to show you how to clean a barrel. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. If you're watching a gun video, you have probably cleaned a barrel at some point in your life. Clean the barrel just like you would clean any other barrel of any other firearm. So one more thing that you're going to want to clean that you don't want to neglect is the inside of the tube where the bolt and the spring rides. And a little tip for you, a 12 gauge swab for cleaning a 12 gauge uh, shotgun bore fits perfectly inside of that tube and would work really well and does work really well to clean the inside of that bore out so that all of your moving parts have got a nice clean surface to ride on. Just screw this to a cleaning rod just like you would do with your barrel. Run that up and down a few times to clean it out, give it a light coat of oil, and away you go. All right, so now it's time to reassemble it. So the first thing I like to do is I like to take the bolt carrier and the bolt itself and remove the dog hair from it. And I like to just put them together. Now you can see right here there's a notch on both pieces, and those notches marry together just like that, and that's how they go together. Now... There's a flat side to the bottom of this bolt and there's a round side to the top of the bolt. The round side goes towards the top of the firearm. The flat side goes towards the magazine well of the firearm. So when you're putting this all back together, make sure it gets slid in in the correct orientation with the firearm so it'll all go back together. So now that we have those two pieces put together, you go ahead and just slide them down into the tube trying to keep the orientation relatively close. It may move a little bit and that's not a big deal. And then you slide it in until you see the hole for the charging handle appear in the window right here and then you can slide the charging handle in. Now what you have to do is you actually have to get the bolt past that hammer. And it's, you can sometimes you can just pull straight down on it and it'll go past, but sometimes they're a little tight. So what I'll take is I'll just do a I'll lift the gun up and I'll just do a light gentle tap on the muzzle of the firearm on my workbench to help get it started. And then it slides down past the hammer like it's supposed to. You don't have to hit it hard, it just has to be enough to get it to move. So now I'm past the hammer. Now it's time to insert the spring. Now on the back side of that bolt there's a hole that the spring goes in and you just kind of hunt around and fish for it until you find it. And you can feel it go in there. And once you feel it has gone in there, then you take your buttstock, push your buttstock on and go well past it. Then you can go ahead and take your charging handle and drop it down just so that this spring is kind of level with the tube. Then you take your barrel release mechanism. It's also got a hole in it that accepts the backside of that spring. So you just kind of line it all up there. And then push it all down, letting the charging handle fall completely so that you can see now that hole lines up in the tube. And once the hole is lined up in the tube, then you just push the stock back up to the position that you want it. And I'm going to go all back out to Gorilla Arm, which is the length that I need. You get all those holes lined up. Go ahead and insert the pin the same way that you took it out, lock it into place, and your firearm is reassembled. Now that the gun is put back together, we just have to do a function check on it. So I go ahead and pull the charging handle, release it, it all functions that way. The safety is still on, and if I pull the trigger, nothing happens. Put the safety to the fire position, click, it shoots. Pull the charging handle, click, it shoots. Charging handle locks back into the open position like it's supposed to. Everything on the gun works. Now that we know everything in the firearm works, I will just take a little shot of ram oil, spray it inside the chamber just to kind of clean or re-lubricate that. Go ahead and drop the bolt forward. Tiny little shot of ram oil there just to kind of lubricate that. Work it a few times just like you normally do. 
and your Keltec Sub 2K has been cleaned. And there you have it. That's how you field strip, clean, and reassemble your Keltec Sub 2K. Super, super simple to take apart. It's, it's nothing hard. Uh, I have taken few guns apart that were any easier than this. With that, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Now, as always, please make sure you go down and hit that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. It's the only way I ever ask for support on this channel. And with uh, YouTube playing games with the algorithms, it would really be appreciated if you did do that for me. I would very much appreciate it. As always, thank you to my longtime subscribers. Thank you to everybody who watches the video. Thanks to Terry for suggesting the video. And if you have any other videos that you want me to do, please hit me in the comments and uh, suggest those videos. And I will see what I can do about getting them done. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for stopping by and we will see you on the next video.